what would I like to have written on my tombstone? That's, I don't really think about that much. Um, I'm not sure. I would not want it to say Bitcoin guy. <laughs> I hope that, uh, I hope that I'm like, known more for you know, like being a good person rather than being a, uh, you know, just the guy who did a lot of stuff for Bitcoin. So maybe like all around good guy is what I'd want written on my tombstone. I think the big challenges now are figuring out kind of which market niches are going to take off first. So is it going to be international remittances? Is it going to be, I don't know, tourists traveling? Is it going to be something else that we don't see that's really going to kind of make Bitcoin mainstream? Maybe it'll be some particular part of the world where, you know, they, they have, they haven't enjoyed a stable currency. Maybe Bitcoin will really start to become mainstream there. But I think the next challenge for Bitcoin really is to go from this kind of really niche early adopter thing to you finding some part in the world of money where Bitcoin really makes a huge amount of sense. My attitude is to let lots of experiments happen. And that is happening. So yeah, I have no idea how Bitcoin will succeed. I'm reasonably successful that it will succeed. Um, and, you know, my job as kind of working on the, the core pieces of Bitcoin is to make sure that those core pieces remain reliable. And so I really do think that it's like the early days of the internet where I don't think anybody would have predicted Facebook and Twitter as being huge uses of the internet or streaming movies or uh, I should go back people probably did predict that but people predicted all sorts of other things for the internet too um, so I think you just have to try lots of things lots of things will fail uh, but there'll be a few things that, that will succeed I think they're right to be skeptical I think maybe if they start to understand it maybe they'll start to become less skeptical um, maybe they won't maybe they will you know, still believe that you know Bitcoin can't possibly take their business for reasons X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, I'm not a banker. Uh, and I'm always very careful not to assume that I know more about somebody's business than somebody who's in that business. Um, but if I was a banker, I would be definitely learning more about Bitcoin and thinking about how either Bitcoin or some other technology enabled by the internet you know, might disrupt what they're doing. And if they're not thinking about that, I think they will be out of business in 10 or 15 years because I think the world of money really hasn't embraced the internet yet. And uh, I think, as you say, you know, any business that hasn't embraced the internet is going to have trouble. I mean, the world of money is such a large place. That, that I think there is room for more than one. I mean, the network effects for Bitcoin are huge in that if you're thinking about accepting some virtual currency or using some payment system, you naturally kind of want to use the one that's the biggest because it will let you reach the most customers or let you, you know, exchange value with the most number of other people in the world. Um, and so there's naturally kind of a, a you know, everybody wants to you know join the most popular system and you know, Bitcoin has a huge head start so I think any system that you know wants to exceed Bitcoin will have to be a whole lot better in some way to compete you know just being a little bit better in a couple different ways you just won't be able to compete um, but you know that said I think there might be systems that are used for particular niches where they really are a whole lot better. Bitcoin's the first successful electronic cash system. And so you really, sh I think of it as electronic cash. So it's, it's cash in that if I pay somebody, it's like paying somebody with cash. There's a one-to-one -one, you know, with no other party involved in the transaction. 
So it's not like credit cards or any other form of internet payment that we've seen. It really is a, you know, I pay you and it's just like we were, you know, uh, in person exchanging, you know, Euro coins. Uh, it's, it's, you know, at a, at a high conceptual level, we're just doing that electronically. Um, and so that, that's really the huge advantage, that's a huge breakthrough. And that's why, you know, people are really excited because, you know, cash has its uses. Um, you know, credit cards and banks are useful, but you don't always use them. There may be reasons of privacy, there may be reasons of convenience, certainly reasons of cost where, you know, cash is better. And so bringing that, bringing the idea of cash to the internet, I think is really incredibly uh, exciting and powerful. The technical advantages, I mean, Bitcoin's designed for the internet. So you know, if you look at the payment systems that we're running now on the internet, most of them were designed maybe back in the day of uh, paper check, uh, some of them designed even before that. And so the processes are inefficient, the um, costs are high. You know, Bitcoin really is designed for the internet. It's designed with the you know, kind of latest stable technology. Um, and so it will just be more efficient, uh, faster, more convenient, and global. Treat Bitcoin as a very high risk investment. So, you know, don't invest your life savings in it, don't, you know, if you want to buy some Bitcoins, don't buy, you don't, you know, mortgage your house to buy Bitcoins. Um, you know, treat it as a high-risk investment and make sure your investments are diversified. Um, because it is you know, brand new technology that does have bugs. Um, we're getting better and better at making the core, well, the core system has been actually incredibly reliable. Um, the systems built on top have been a lot less reliable. So we've seen a lot of failures of Bitcoin businesses. We've seen a lot of failures of uh, you know, just security on people's computers. I'm sure we'll see failures of security on people's you know, mobile phones if they're using their mobile phones to store their Bitcoins. Um, so in the same way that you, know, you wouldn't walk around uh, Amsterdam with you know a hundred thousand dollars in cash in your pocket because you might get robbed I think you should treat Bitcoin the same way as cash that you have you shouldn't have more than you're willing to lose well I mean there are technical questions that I would love to chat with him about just kind of design questions about you know how Bitcoin was designed and some of the decisions he made that he just never answered like definitively, I meant it to be this way versus you know, I had to pick a number and so this is the number I picked. Um, so I think those are the kind of questions that, that I would be most interested in asking him, which may sound funny to like, somebody who's not a, a programmer. Uh, but for you know, programmers, it really is about the technology, it's not about the personality. So like I, I guess, you know, once I got those technical questions out of the way, you know, I might ask him what his background is and what he did before Bitcoin and kind of, you know, where did he go to school? That, those kinds of things would also be interesting to know. Um, but less interesting than like some of the technical questions that make me scratch my head and wonder, you know, did he choose 10 minutes based on some simulation or was it just kind of it felt like about the right amount of time for a new Bitcoin block to come out? I think it's very different. If you can read the code and understand it, then you know you don't have to trust Satoshi. I mean, it doesn't matter who wrote the code. It's the code. You know, the computers execute the code in the way that you tell them to execute the code. So you can, you can, you know, be be sure that the system is as described. And trust that that's true because you know you can verify it. Um, so and I, I understand though people who, who don't know how to code who can't read C++ you know looking at kind of where has Bitcoin come from and kind of looking at it with should I trust it. Um, 
And really, I think the only way for Bitcoin to gain that trust is, is for time to pass and for Bitcoin to continue working and for people to hear about it six or seven or eight or ten times over three or four or five or ten years um, and realize that it's, it's, it's not scary to know people who are using it um, and are happy with it. So I, I think trust will just take time. And then Satoshi becomes a creation myth, right? I mean, we love creation myths. And I think they're often scary and mysterious. And I don't know, it'll be interesting to see in 10 years does the fact that Bitcoin has this mysterious anonymous creator help it or hurt it? Um, I don't know. I think it might actually help it. Just kind of. It certainly. People are certainly interested in that part of the story, and I, I think that actually helps. Some regulators want to know. Some regulators are very concerned about consumer privacy, and would rather you know, nobody knew. Um, I guess you know. Ideally, the government wants to strike that balance between consumer privacy and the ability for law enforcement to find bad people doing bad things. Um, and I think that balance can be struck. And you know, privacy and anonymity in Bitcoin is a very complicated thing. I mean, every Bitcoin transaction is public. So it's very different from like credit card transactions where the credit card company knows everything about what you're buying. Um, and they say that they won't tell anybody. Although, looking at all of the security and data breaches that have happened, I think that's a big problem. I think maybe kind of the next wave of data breaches we'll see might be you know, people's full transaction histories getting hacked from a big database somewhere release to the world. Um, government and law enforcement kind of has to flip the way they do things with Bitcoin and, and think of it like cash. So if you think about cash transactions, you know, the government has no way of knowing if you and I trade a few euros. But if you try to buy a car at least I know in the United States, if you try to, if you bring a suitcase full of $100 bills to a car dealership and try to buy a car with cash, you know, they're required to fill out a report saying, hey, this person whose government ID is here uh, just bought a Lamborghini with cash. You might want to know about that. You might want to go ask them, where did they get that cash? I think Bitcoin would be very similar. And so, you know, just because you're using Bitcoin, it's not going to excuse you from the rules that are already in place um, and that governments seem to deal pretty well with in, in the world of cash. Right, I grew up in Australia and the United States, which are pretty free countries. Um, I, don't, I don't know how you convince countries that have more culture of control um, to allow Bitcoin to allow the Bitcoin experiment to happen in their country? Uh, it's, that's a good question for somebody who knows a lot more about kind of the cultures there. Um, you know, I would say to them on a very broad level that you know, letting people experiment and innovate is the path to incredible prosperity. I think we see that over and over again. Um, and I don't know, I, I don't know if that's a message that they would listen to or not. Money used to be very democratic in that, you know, seashells or some other rare but available object was used as money. There was no barrier to anybody creating more of it, right? Um, when gold was used as money, anybody could try to find some gold and to get out of the ground. Um, it's interesting because Bitcoin kind of goes back to that model of, you know, there's no barrier to, there's no gatekeeper, there's no uh, government or corporation that says, you know, I will be the official creator of the money and keeper of the 
books of who owns what. It's much more distributed and uh, much more like you know, kind of money when it started. Um, and so it will be interesting to see if, if, if Bitcoin really does take off or things like Bitcoin. We might go back to, to that older model of you know, people really being more in control of money creation, money accounting, all, all, of, all of that. I think that would be a good thing, actually. I love working on new things. I started my career working on 3D computer graphics when 3D computer graphics were brand new and different and uh, this was back in you know 1988 you know before uh, before 3D graphics chips pretty much and so I just enjoy working on new technology and thinking about technologies that really have a big impact and uh, Bitcoin caught my interest and it's been very very interesting.